More and more, I regret our kindness to Donsony. I never knew such a fool in matters of love. When I arrived yesterday for Madame de Vallon, she was feeling unwell. It needed all my eloquence to persuade her to go out anyway, and we narrowly avoided meeting Donsony as he arrived for Cecile. We had scarcely been out half an hour when Madame de Vallange began to feel seriously ill and wanted to go home. Of course, if we had come back and surprised the young couple, it would have compromised not only them, but myself, who had persuaded the mother to go out. I adopted the plan of frightening her about her health, which fortunately is not difficult, and I kept her an hour and a half without consenting to take her home, from the fear I pretended to have that the motion of the carriage would be dangerous. So, we didn't get back until the agreed upon time, but while the girl had done everything I expected of her, banished scruples, new vows to love forever, etc., etc., the fool Donsony did not pass one inch beyond the point he was at before. The little girl asserts that he wanted more and that she was able to defend herself, but I would wager that she is either boasting or excusing him. In fact, the fancy came to me to find out what kind of a defense she was capable of, and I, a mere woman, from one link to another, worked her up to such a degree that, in short, never was a person so liable to an attack on the senses. She is frankly delightful. She deserves a better lover. At least she will have a good woman friend. I have promised her I will train her. I have often felt the need of having a woman in my confidence, but I can do nothing with her until she is what she must be. And that is one more reason for being angry with Donsony. Goodbye, Vicomte. Do not call on me tomorrow unless it is in the morning. I have yielded to the entreaties of Belle Roche for an evening in my little house. You were right, my dear Sophie. Donsony and I are now exactly as we were. Oh, I do not regret it. It is very easy for you to say what I ought to do. But if you had felt how much it hurts to see the grief of a person one loves, how his joy becomes yours. And how difficult it is to say no when you want to say yes. You would not be surprised at anything. Our amusements, our laughter, all of it, are only child's play. But love, love, a word, a look, only to know that he is there. That is happiness. <laughs> I do not know how it happens, but it is as if everything that pleases me is like him. And when I am alone, I close my eyes and immediately I see him and I hear him. And then I feel a fire, an agitation, and I cannot keep still. It is like torture. The torture is an inexpressible pleasure. I even think that when one is in love, it extends to friendship as well. My friendship for you is not changed. It is just as it was at the convent. But the friendship I am speaking about, I feel for Madame de Mertoy. It seems to me that I love her more like Dantony than like you. And sometimes I wish she were he. Perhaps it is because it is not a childish friendship like ours. Or perhaps because I see them so often together. In any case, between them, they make me very happy. The only thing that troubles me is the idea of my marriage. For if... Monsieur de Jacor is like what I am told he is. I do not know what will become of me. Even if I believed you really loved me, would it remove any of the obstacles between us? Desist. I beg you. Desist from attempting to trouble a heart to which tranquility is so necessary. Do not compel me to regret having known you. I am cherished and respected by a husband whom I love and respect. If keener pleasures exist, I do not desire them. I do not wish to experience them. But you call happiness to mere storm of passion, the sight of which is terrifying, even looked at from the shore. How can one dare those tempests? How dare to embark upon a sea covered with the remains of thousands and thousands of shipwrecks? And who? No, monsieur, I shall remain on land.
Is this how you carry out the conditions under which I've consented to correspond with you? Separated from me in person, you pursue me in letter after letter. I do not wish to reply to you again. I shall not reply again. How you treat the women you have seduced. What contempt you speak of them. I am willing to believe that some deserve it, but are all so contemptible. Doubtless they are, since they betrayed their duty to yield to a criminal love. In that moment, they lost everything, even the respect of him for whom they sacrificed everything. But after all, what does it matter to me? Why should I concern myself with them or with you? Leave me. Do not see me again. Write to me no more. I beg you. I insist on it. This letter is the last you will receive from me. I found your letter yesterday on my arrival. Your anger altogether delighted me. You could not have felt Dawsony's mistakes more keenly if they had been directed at yourself. You are charming, and I am not surprised that Cecile could resist you less easily than the languishing Dawsony. At last, that fine novel hero has vowed to me his unreserved friendship. In my virtuous love for Madame de Torvel, he has found a kindred spirit. <laughs> that does not help us on with our plan. First of all, his idea was that an unmarried girl deserves much more deference than a married woman, since she has more to lose. The difficulty would not be to combat his reasonings, however true they may be. No. It is that he is happy as he is. The, the charm of love is so powerful upon a fresh heart that it forgets every other pleasure as a libertine in love. <laughs> if a libertine can be in love, I almost understand how he feels. To inflame our young man, he needs more obstacles than he has met with. I am not far from thinking that you have harmed us by serving him so well. What is to be done now? I do not know. But I have ceased to hope that the girl will be taken before marriage. I am sorry, but I see no help for it. While I am discoursing here, you are doing something better with Benaroche. Goodbye, my fair friend. I embrace you as I desire you. I defy all of Belaroche's kisses to have as much ardor. 